Afternoon. We're asking some difficult questions this afternoon about how we stop I extreme Islamic inspired terror. Uh, we're on uh, a heightened alert here in the UK as a result of that. We were told over the weekend in some of the Sunday newspapers that the UK faces more danger from terror at the moment as a result of the changes in Afghanistan and the withdrawal and everything that's happened around that. We've also seen Islamic inspired terror take place in New Zealand today with stabbings from a perpetrator who has been named as someone, well not named formally, but has been described as someone who is a violent extremist and supporter of Islamic State. Let's hear, before we cross live to New Zealand, from the New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern addressing the nation after this attack. This afternoon at approximately 2.40pm, a violent extremist undertook a terrorist attack on innocent New Zealanders in the Newland Countdown in Auckland. But first I want to acknowledge the six innocent people who have been attacked. Three, I understand, are seriously injured. This was a violent attack. It was senseless, and I am so sorry it happened. The attack began at 2.40 p.m. and was undertaken by an individual who was a known threat to New Zealand. The individual was under constant monitoring and it was the police surveillance team and special tactics group who were part of that monitoring and surveillance that shot and killed him within, I'm told, the space of roughly 60 seconds of the attack starting. So that's Jacinda Ardern, the uh, Prime Minister of New Zealand. Let's now cross live to New Zealand. Rex Wilderston is a journalist based there and joins me now live on Talk Radio. Afternoon to you, Rex. Afternoon, Chris Day. So what's the latest that you can tell us? Well, it's, uh, it's past midnight here, so there's not a lot more news uh, emerging as far as we know. Thankfully, uh, nobody has, uh, has died. Uh, the, the, we still have the three people uh, in critical condition, as you heard the Prime Minister say, uh, but that uh, situation seems to have, uh, have stabilised. Uh, I think New Zealand uh, is is in shock, not just because of, of the horror of the situation, uh, but because I don't think any of us realised that people uh, of this nature were walking around the streets. And, and as you heard the Prime Minister say, uh, tailed constantly by a, a, a police team. And, and very fortunate we are that they were, because uh, they were there, as you, you heard, within 60 seconds and, and took him down very, very quickly. But uh, he he has now this is coming out uh, the, the background about him he's 32 years old uh, he's known only as s at the moment due to uh, uh, court suppression orders uh, and the uh, the cases that those court uh, suppression orders relate to are shocking he has been found in possession of uh, islamic state uh, literature and videos uh, he has put uh, very very clear messages uh, on facebook calling uh, uh, new zealanders scum uh, he made a direct threat that he would return to Sri Lanka, uh, find uh, New Zealanders living there and kill them. Uh, clearly, uh, I guess perhaps COVID changed his plans and he decided to do that here. But, I mean, the threat is clear. Uh, he's been in prison uh, for these things. He told the jury uh, in, the, in the knife trial that I'm going to go out and buy more knives as soon as I'm released from jail. Uh, we haven't deported him. It seems that we were unable to. Uh, we're not sure why, because of the suppression orders. Uh, but uh, so how many other people like him are, are walking around uh, ticking bombs, waiting to go off? And I think that's uh, uh, apart from the horror and, and our hearts going out to the victims is, uh, is what's on most of our minds at the moment. So this man had already been tried and convicted and imprisoned for some of the hate speech and the extremist hate speech he's put online. Is that right? On at least a couple of occasions, I'm just going to consult my, uh, my, my notes for a moment so we don't breach any suppression orders. Uh, but last year, the Crown sought to prosecute him under the Terrorism Suppression Act um, for some of the things that he had been saying. But the Act, um, amazingly enough, uh, does not have uh, plotting a terrorist act as an offence, only carrying one out. 
Uh, so the Crown was unable to continue with that. A judge threw that out, but they did get him on uh, possessing not even all of the literature uh, that he had, despite it uh, containing beheadings uh, and things like that. Not even all of that was, was found to come under the Act, uh, but a couple of bits were. They found knife hidden away, uh, and so they managed to put him away for a, a, a relatively short period of time uh, for, for some you know, relatively minor offences. But so concerned were they when he was released that they, they we've had... Uh, a team of apparently about five police on him 24 hours a day, seven days a week at goodness knows what cost uh, for that long. And in a country that's uh, only two and a half years uh, out of a, an attack, you'll recall in Christchurch, I think it was the last time we spoke, that killed uh, 51 people and injured 40, um, sort of this... Well, I don't, don't want to say lackadaisical approach because, the, as the Prime Minister said, they have done all that they can, but this this gaping hole in in our terrorism laws i think is the fact that it hasn't been dealt with before now is is surprising uh, to put it mildly and it's just outright irresponsible i'm sure many people are saying because as you pointed out new zealand had has had long enough since a terror attack to get across a lot of this and I understand the dilemma they must have been in. I mean, if this person was convicted of certain crimes, did their time, was released, and what he said online was not deemed to be a breach enough of the law to be convicted, well, then the laws clearly need changing, and they clearly needed changing before today. Well, yeah, ironically, there is uh, just that change that's been uh, sitting on the books uh, and uh, is, is slowly wending its way through Parliament. You'd think that that would be given... Uh, well, it would have been done before now, and once it finally some, occurred to somebody it needed to be done, uh, that it would have been fast-tracked. I mean, we've had COVID legislation uh, fast-tracked through in 48 hours, but this is uh, this has been sitting there uh, as as not a priority for uh, for anyone, it seems. Uh, and suddenly, of course, uh, now now it is. We'll know more, I think, when the suppression orders on this case are released, and I believe the uh, the Crown is trying to uh, have the Court of Appeal uh, hear its submissions uh, over the weekend so it, that may even emerge in the next 24 or 48 hours but uh, uh, unless there's some some very very good reason why this guy's been able to to wander around when for instance if you're a New Zealander uh, in Australia uh, and you've committed an offense 20 years ago you'll get deported on character grounds now uh, why we're quite so um, relaxed about uh, the presence of these people uh, will hopefully become apparent because that certainly I think uh, it, it once the uh, the, the the sorrow has died down. I think the anger uh, well, does, will does, come, and I think uh, people will, will be held responsible. Does political correctness play a part? Do you think? Well, because there will be those accusations. Um, there will be the accusations that people are perhaps scared for accusations of racism or being inappropriate in some way that 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 these laws can't be brought in as easily as others. Well, people are already, of course, making the, the very valid and, and correct point that uh, th this is not a, a tenant of uh, mainstream Muslim faith. Uh, this is not the way most of the wonderful Sri Lankan community in, in New Zealand behave. Uh, but uh, we're not talking about uh, a person targeting a person because they're Sri Lankan or they're Muslim. We're targeting a person uh, who says, I'm going to go home and, and kill as many Kiwis as I can find in my home country. Now, if we can't immediately jump on that but, person... But, and, but and, Islamic well, inspired islamic extremism inspired okay well, that, yeah, that doesn't yeah. mean that you know that I, you know let's be careful and I'm, I'm very careful to point this out that does not mean that every single muslim shares that view clearly that would be absurd because there are you mm. know i think two billion muslims in the world but but this person was an islamic extremist well, he was. Well, of course, the the, the uh, uh, per perpetrator of the uh, massacre in, in Christchurch uh, was not. He was a, a white Australian uh, with, with alt-right beliefs. Um, and uh, he managed to get hold of a gun, which is very, very lucky that uh, this particular chap, because he was under surveillance, did, didn't do that. So, uh, as I say, it doesn't really, it's, it's not really a matter of, of targeting any particular group. Uh, but the trouble is, um, you're quite right. If we say, well, we're going to uh, clamp down on, on uh, Islamic extremism, then you get people saying, well, you're being unfair, you're, you're targeting people on the basis of, of, of their religious beliefs. No, we're not. We're targeting them, or we would be, we should be, on the basis of their clear threats to kill people. I, I completely get where you're coming from, and it must be frustrating for people uh, as well. Rex uh, Widerstrom, uh, sorry, must pronounce your name correctly. Thank you for taking the time 
to talk to us here on Talk Radio, live from New Zealand.